In order to be successful, you must have one big goal. I give a goal setting exercise all over the world that is life changing. I go back a year later, or two years later, or three years later, and I have thousands of people come up to me, almost like a guru or a sage, and they say, you changed my life, you made me rich. And I said, it was the goals, wasn't it? And they said, it, yes, it was the goals, how did you know? And what I teach is this, is take a piece of paper, make a list of 10 goals that you'd like to achieve in the next 12 months. These are one-year goals. Now sometimes I'll have a one day, a one week, a one month, three months, six months, but they're all goals that you want to accomplish within 12 months. Then you look over this list and you say, if I could wave a magic wand and achieve any one goal on this list within 24 hours, which one goal would have the greatest positive impact on my life? And then you look at your list of 10 and the answer will jump out at you. And that becomes your major definite purpose. This becomes your major goal. Then you transfer this to a clean sheet of paper and you write a deadline when you want to achieve this goal. You make a list of everything that you could think of that you could do to achieve this goal. You then organize this list like a checklist in order of sequence. What do you do first? What do you do second? What do you do third? And then you take action on your goal and then you do something on that goal every day, seven days a week. It's a very simple system. Decide the most important goal, write it down, make a plan, work on it every day. And then all of your other goals will start to move forward. You'll start to make progress on the big goal but all the other goals will start to move forward almost without you even paying attention to them. So that's really the key to success is single focus. Uh, Warren Buffett and Bill Gates were at a dinner party with Bill Gates' father and a large number of other people at Bill Gates' home in Seattle uh, last year. And they were chatting with each other, they're very good friends, and somebody came up to them and said, excuse me gentlemen, I don't mean to interrupt you, but you're three of the most important most successful people in the world. Bill Gates and Warren Buffett are number one, number two wealthiest men in the world. What would you say is the most important ingredient for success? And they all stopped, broke off their conversation and all turned simultaneously and looked at the man and said, focus. Focus is the most important quality for success. If you can focus, you can do anything. If you can't focus, you must always work for someone else who will make you focus. Now, wonderfully enough, focusing is like learning how to ride a bicycle or type with a keyboard. It's a learnable skill. You can learn to focus by practicing focus until it becomes automatic. One of my favorite quotes is from Goethe, the German philosopher, and he said, everything is hard before it's easy. So the formation of any new habit is hard before it's easy. You have to keep working at it. It's just like a bicycle. You keep falling down. You have to keep getting back up again until finally it becomes easier and easier and soon it becomes automatic. And when you automatically get up each day, plan your day and work on your most important goal, your whole life will transform. Many years ago at a talk, I was speaking to Rich DeVos when he was on his way up. Rich DeVos, the president of Amway, worth $5.3 billion today, he started off knocking on doors selling soap. And he was working his way up and I asked him, I said, what have you found? What's the most important quality of successful people? And he said, Brian, he said, we found there's a direct relationship. I still remember him telling me this, between how quickly a person takes action on a new idea and how likely it is they'll ever take action on any idea at all. And so the action orientation is the critical thing. We watch people, everybody hears the same things, they hear the same ideas, but then we watch and we see how quickly they take action. And if a person takes action quickly on a new idea, the chances are they're going to be successful go up by hundreds of percent. Now what most people do is they say, that's a great idea, it's a wonderful idea, I love, I'm going to do that, ooh, ooh, I'm so excited. But before I apply it, I need to take a vacation <laughs> to a wonderful place called Someday Isle. <laughs> and so they go to Someday Isle, and they live on Someday Isle. And who are they surrounded with on Someday Isle? Other people on Someday Isle. And what is the chief topic of conversation on Someday Isle? Yes, it's their excuses. What's your excuse for not taking action? What's your excuse for not getting going? What's your excuse for uh, not losing weight, getting out of debt, building your business, writing your book, getting your book finished, getting your damn book started? You know, uh, in other words, what, what is your, what's your excuse? And they all share excuses. Oh, that's a good excuse. I haven't used that one for a long time. That'll, 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 get, that'll take me another year. And, and so what they do is they sit around, and the bottom 80% of the population lives on Sunday Isle most of their lives. They all have these great resolutions but, and these wonderful intentions, but what's their hold to hell paved with? 
It's good intentions, and I'm going to do that someday, someday. Else. So rule number one for success is whatever you learn here, vote yourself off the island. <laughs> no more someday aisle. Either do it or don't do it. Prepare in advance. You know the old saying, proper prior preparation saves poor performance or prevents poor performance, the six Ps. And so prepare your work list for the following day, the evening or the night before. The last thing you do at the end of the day is you lay out the day that's coming. The best exercise is for you to plan your entire next day as the last thing you do before coming home from work. When you plan your day the night before, your subconscious mind then goes to work on your plans and goals while you're asleep. Very often you'll wake up in the morning with ideas and insights that apply to the work of the day. Now a major benefit of preparing your daily list the night before is that this exercise lets you sleep more soundly. A major reason for insomnia is people lying awake trying not to forget to remember everything that they have to do the following day. But once you've written down everything that you have to do on the list, it clears your mind and enables you to sleep deeply. This will help you increase your productivity throughout the whole next day of work because you'll be more relaxed and more refreshed. Give yourself a reward of some kind for practicing the new behavior. Each time you reward yourself, you reaffirm and reinforce that behavior. Soon you begin to associate at an unconscious level the pleasure of the reward with the behavior. You set up your own force field of positive consequences that you unconsciously look forward to as a result of engaging in that behavior or habit that you've decided upon. So here are some guidelines for writing your goals. First, make sure you write them in the present tense as if your goal had already been achieved. For example, instead of saying, I will earn X amount of dollars each year, write, I earn X dollars each year. The reasons we do this is because your subconscious mind can only register commands that are phrased in the present tense. Next, write your goals in the positive sense. So instead of saying, I will quit smoking, you would write, I am a non-smoker. Finally, write your goals in the personal tense. In other words, all of your goals should start with the word I. This is the only way that your subconscious recognizes that this is a command coming from the head office, is when you say I plus an action verb in the positive sense. I earn X number of dollars this year. There's a process which has made more people rich than any other single process of goal achieving. And it's to take your major goal and structure it as a question. If your goal is to earn $100,000 a year, then you write, how can I earn $100,000 in the next 12 months? Now, that's an open-ended question, not how can I earn it at my job or doing a specific thing, just an open-ended question. How can I earn the amount of money? And then you discipline yourself to write 20 answers to the question. And the 20 answers are all the different things that you could think of to earn $100,000. Work longer, uh, work harder, uh, upgrade my skills, get a new job, take a part-time opportunity. Uh, whatever it happens to be, write down everything you could think of, but force yourself to write at least 20 questions or 20 answers to the question. The 20 question method called mindstorming forces you to dig deep, deep into your mind where you will find all your answers. And it may be call a person, uh, read a book. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, we had a young fellow, entrepreneur, he got 35 years old. He'd built a successful business. He'd worked about 10 years to do it. And he, for two years, wanted to sell his business so he could take a year off and travel, enjoy his money. And so for two years, he just sort of floundered around like a fish on the dock, wanting to sell his business. Nobody uh, offered to buy it. He suggested it to people. Uh, people were not interested and so on. And in this exercise that they put him through, his 20th answer, and often it's the 20th answer that is the breakthrough, was buy a book on how to sell your own business. And it just went off like a flashbulb in his mind. At the break, he got up. It's a downtown hotel. He got up, went down to the street to a major bookstore, went and found he was amazed at the number of books that had been written on how to buy and sell a business. So he bought two or three books. Two months later, he had restructured, packaged his business, sold it completely, satisfactorily, and took a year off. 
He said, but it was just a single idea. It was a breakthrough idea. But it was so simple. Just get a book on the subject. <laughs> and you think, boy, that's pretty obvious, yes. But it's the most obvious answers that we overlook.